we totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Grow Show. I'm your host for today's episode, Sean Blackburn with Sweetfish Media. I'm joined today by Travis Chapel. He's the founder and the host, I should say, of Build Your Network. Travis, how are you doing today? Hey, man. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us today. I'm definitely excited to be talking about how to get traffic on Facebook without spending a dime on ads. Uh, but before we do that, would love to just hear a little bit about your background on yourself and what you're doing over at Build Your Network. Yeah, of course, man. So I started my, you know, quote unquote career in actually door to door sales. So um, lots and lots of cold calling experience, uh, lots and lots of uh, rejections and people telling me no all the time and all that good stuff. Um, I actually did that for a really long time. So I started probably about six years or so. I was in door to door, um, a, a couple of different industries. I would go in, start selling. I would learn how to sell, and then I would immediately start building a team, recruiting, training, managing other reps, and did that for uh, the solar industry. And then jumped into the alarm industry for a bit, and then ended that in the water industry, um, water purification industry. And then along the way, really, what happened is uh, at the end of 2015, I was 23, I think I turned 23 that year. And I, it was the first year I ever made six figures and I was stoked. But at the same time, I was also kind of afraid because I had kind of hit a ceiling already at the company I was working at. And Mm -hmm. it was really scary for me because I was like, Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm 23 and I'm already hitting a ceiling here. Um, I'm already the second highest paid rep within a year of coming here, like in the entire office. The only guy that was paid more than me worked literally twice the amount of hours. And so I got this like this weird feeling. I don't know how to explain it just on the inside of me. If, you, if you're listening to this and you know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. you definitely understand. I just got this weird feeling of like, man, I, sh- there, there's, there's, I shouldn't be here. Like there's something that I'm missing. There's something else that I want to do that, you know, there's another way that, that I can, you know, build the life of my dreams. And so after kind of realizing that I took a long break and took literally probably like six months off. And obviously for a hustler, no months are off. You're always hustling something, you know, but for the most part, I didn't really work. I brought in a really low um, amount of money. Um, I cashed in on a real estate investment. My wife was working and it allowed me some time to go back and just kind of dive into personal development, which I had never done up to that point. I probably read less than 10 books in their entirety in my entire lifetime up to that point. And which, and that Mm. includes like all my school and college projects, the books I was supposed to read that I'd never read or the, you know what I mean? So I I was never into any of that kind of stuff. And I just kind of dove into it at that point, started listening to some old Jim Rohn audio, some Zig Ziglar, and then started watching some YouTube videos and picking up some books, reading, uh, reading for the first time, listening to audio books and just kind of really diving into personal development. And that was the first time that I found podcasts. And uh, at the time started listening to uh, a guy who's now a friend and mentor of mine, John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire. And just really liked the content, kept listening and digesting. And um, basically, after a a period of time, I reached out and I was like, hey, I think this is going to be something that I could do. And uh, so that was what I really pursued for the next part of my life. So during that time, I was still hustling water machines. I basically 
got my own water machine dealership. So I was kind of running my own company without really running my own company, if that makes sense. I right. um, started like building up a team and selling all that kind of stuff so that I could um, keep the podcast going in the background. And then, and then uh, about six, seven months ago, it switched to being full time. So I stepped away from the water business and now doing full time podcasting. So that's a really brief blimp perspective of the last few years. Yeah, absolutely. So our topic today, it's obviously a lot about uh, driving traffic and and we'll, we'll talk about how to do that in a second. But on your site, I was reading kind of just your about and was really struck by by the value that you place on building your network. Maybe speak a little bit to that. Why, why is that so important for, for anybody, but for a B2B professional uh, marketer, you know, any sort of salesperson to be building proactively your network? Yeah, I would say if success matters to you, then building your network should matter to you. There's so many studies out there. I was literally just reading a a book on this right before we jumped on this interview, actually like an hour ago. And um, that was talking about, I forget which study it was. It was a study at some prominent Ivy League school that um, showed that uh, there's there's a few different uh, trackable ways that building your network really comes into play in your life. And one of the biggest things for me is the acceleration process. Mm. So yeah, will you get access to to, um, to information, yeah, of course. You get knowledge base, yeah, of course. Um, what will it will it uh, help you not feel lonely? Will it give you a sense of community? All those things, yes, of course. But the biggest thing is the rate at which you achieve your goals. It's just such an accelerated rate if you know the right people. So uh, if if you're not spending time building your network, then I think that you need to reevaluate some of the priorities that you have right now and really start spending on purpose time. Start spending on purpose money even into growing your relationships and building your network and increasing the circle of people that are around you. I love that. I've actually never heard it put that way. So I'll definitely be getting that link from you and we'll definitely share that in our show notes, um, that article or, or book title that you were mentioning. Cause, yeah, uh, give and take. Okay, cool. Thanks so much for sharing that. That's awesome. So yeah, to jump kind of to our topic today, how to get traffic on Facebook without spending a dime on ads. Sounds like a fairy tale, actually. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you've got uh, some ways that, that you know anybody, but today we'll be talking about B2B professionals and marketers and how they could do that. Um, so maybe just speak a little bit to, to you know, the strategy as a whole. How did you kind of get involved with looking at it this way? Yeah, for sure. So good question. The The biggest thing is understanding that whatever doesn't cost money that works is going to probably cost you time. So mm-hmm. it sounds like a fairy tale, but then when you put in the work, you start realizing like, oh, it's, it's actual work to do it this Not way. magic, right? So, yeah, there, there is no, you know, I'm sure as everybody knows, there is no magic formula or secret formula. It's just like putting in the work sometimes. And um, if you have a bunch of money to spend on ads, great, go spend money on ads and get traffic that way and optimize and then optimize and re-optimize and then make sure your conversions are good and do all that good stuff about creating ads. So, But I want to talk about if you don't have a ton of money to spend on ads or if you have money to spend on ads, but you'd rather spend them in other places, or if you are a salesperson, you're not running your own business and it's not up to you to manage ad spend, but you still want to get more sales, then uh, you might want to listen up to this. So Facebook is such a unique platform because it is like the monster of all platforms. Most, right. the, the most people are on Facebook out of any other social media site out there. So taking advantage of the people that are on there is a fantastic way to go about bringing more people into your network, getting more people to know you, right? Because people buy from you when they know, like, can trust you, right? So there's three different steps there. You have to get them to know you, then you have to get them to like you, then you have to get them to trust you, and then they give you money. So if you don't have a bunch of people who know you, then you're not going to have a bunch of people who like you. You're not going to have a bunch of people trust you. So the idea is to get more people to know you so that you can Hmm. get more people to like you, so you can get more people to trust you, right? So in the Facebook setting, there's a couple of things that people are doing wrong. So I'm going to talk mostly about how to um, use Facebook groups to get in touch with the right people. And the very first thing that you have to do before you do any of the other stuff we're going to talk about is you have to go optimize your Facebook profile. So whatever profile you have on Facebook, you have to go optimize that. Now, we're talking personal profile, right? 
Yeah, correct. Correct. Or I mean, it, really, whichever, whatever you're trying to drive traffic to. So if you have your page, yep. then you can use that. If you have your personal profile, you can use that. Um, whatever you're trying to drive traffic to. I, I start with a personal profile and until you like max out the friends list because Facebook's algorithm tends to favor personal profiles over business unless you spend money. So I, I just tend to use a personal one until it gets to the point like right now I have like 4,500 friends. So recently I created a page as well because once I max that friends list out, I won't be able to have any more people. So right. like, but I would say putting in the work to like have that actually happen organically instead of just like going through and friending 4,000 people tomorrow um, is uh, is going to benefit you a lot longer, a lot more in the long run. Right. Makes so sense. as a caveat to this whole conversation, if you don't want to use your Facebook like your your Facebook for anything but personal stuff, then just disregard everything that I'm talking about. <laughs> right, because, this is not like, for you. Like, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> like this is this is for people that are trying to increase sales, increase business through using this platform. So first thing, optimize your Facebook profile. Um, so we'll start from the top and work our way down on your Facebook profile. The very first thing people see when they pull up your timeline is the cover photo. The cover photo is literally a free billboard for you. It is real estate on a site that gets a ton of traffic. And if you're not using that properly, then you're missing out. So what I would 100% recommend doing is getting a cover photo professionally designed by somebody. It's like 40, 50 bucks. Just get it done. Have it be a literal billboard. Like what would you put on a billboard for, you know, for your, for your business, for your product? What would you put on a billboard to capture attention and to get people to actually be interested in what you're doing. And then think about that and then get a designer to design a professionally done uh, cover photo. If you go to my Facebook, which is just facebook.com slash travis.chapel15, that's my personal profile, travis.chapel15, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. You come up, you pull up my Facebook profile. My cover photo is professionally designed. It has a it has pictures of like 10 or 12 of some guests that I've had on on my show, Build Your Network. And it says, recognize anyone, then you'll love my podcast. Nice. And um, it says with my podcast logo, my artwork right there. And it has a bunch of pictures of a bunch of people that probably a lot of people will recognize if you're in the business world at all. People like Grant Cardone and Kevin Harrington and and uh, Patrick Bet David and Ed Milad and Jordan Harbinger and all these people that are bigger names in this sphere that are that have been on my show. So I want people to understand that. So they go there, they see a recognizable face, then they go, oh, interesting. They've been on his podcast. So then we move down to the profile picture. It amazes me how many people have like a profile picture of their cat with a party hat on or something like that. <laughs> right. um, if this is you, then it's probably time to go put one of yourself in there. Now, at I least don't... at the very least on your LinkedIn, I even see that on LinkedIn these days, but yeah, yeah on your right. Facebook, <laughs> you need right. it too. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and I'm not a stickler for getting a professional like photo shoot done for your Facebook. Sure. Like you don't need to go spend 500 bucks for this design and that design and this picture and that picture. In fact, you can probably lose a little bit of personal touch if it looks too professional. Um, I think you should do the professional cover photo, but the profile picture, as long as it's a clear picture of you, don't use the back of your head. Don't use a hand. Don't use a book. Don't use, don't use Mount, a picture mountain. of, yeah. yeah, right, right. Exactly. And don't, don't use a picture of you with seven other people in it. Like how many times you've been to a conference or met somebody in person and recognize them based on their online profile? Like, mm. like, oh, you know what? I'm friends with that guy on Facebook. We comment on each other's stuff all the time. That's why I know who that is. If your back is turned, your profile picture, then the little thumbnail image that pops up whenever you comment on something or like something is going to be the back of your head. Nobody's going to recognize you. You don't get the, um, the, the recognition that you should be getting with the traffic that you're already getting. So make sure it's you, make sure you're recognizable and make sure there's not 12 other people in the picture because you don't want people to have, like the, the goal is to make it as easy as possible to know who you are, right? right? That is that is the goal of this whole thing. So if you have somebody doing guesswork of like, oh, I wonder which one of these 12, you know, Travis Chapel is, I guess I'll have to look at the next profile picture. And then the next profile picture is you and four other people. And it's like, okay, which one? Getting closer. Like, yeah. yeah, like which one, which one is in common? You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> like which guy was in both the picture of the 12 and the picture of the four? Like you don't want people to do a bunch of guesswork to have it clear cut who you are 
are um, uh, as your profile picture. Okay, now moving down on the Facebook profile some more. The intro, it's it's crazy to me how how generalized people do this thing. They 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 want to sound cool. Right. Mm-hmm. So they have all this generic terminology there that just doesn't tell anybody anything. So they'll have something that's that's like, you know, lover of life, food enthusiast, serial entrepreneur. That's one of my favorites and one of the most <laughs> used. You know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I have, you, you know what I'm talking about. Like, oh, they I do. Have all I these, do. Like, yeah. Generic samplings of bunch of nonsense that doesn't tell me anything about what you actually do. Like I'm coming to your profile because I'm, I obviously have a little bit of an inkling or caring to know what you're about. So if there's no way for me to know what you're about, then like, what do I do at that point? I probably just hit the back button and forget that I connected with you, right? Whereas if you have something there that hooks people in and tells them exactly what you do, that's going to help you really narrow the focus for the ideal customer that you're trying to attract. So you have the cover photo and it looks nice and it's like a billboard for your, for your business or for your sales or whatever. Then you have a profile picture that looks good that people can tell it's you. And then you go down to the intro, just come up with like a one, a quick one liner that goes right there that tells people exactly what you do. So if you go to my profile, it literally says, I help people network the right way by asking experts how they do it. And then Mm -hmm. it has my website right there, travischapel.com. So there's, there's no ambiguity there, right? Like you can't come to my profile and be like, okay, but what do you do? And I'm just not, like, I tell you right there, I help people network the right way by asking experts how they do it. And then like you saw my, my podcast stuff in my profile, the show's called build your network. So right. like if there's a little bit of intrigue with the build your network logo and text in my cover photo, then they see the intro. I help people network the right way by asking experts how they do it. Oh, interesting. So he's had all these people on his show, build your network, talking about networking and how to do it the right way. If I'm now, if I'm a person that's interested in networking and how to do it the right way now, like I'm actually interested interested in the stuff that's happening on my profile. Does that make Love sense? It. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm on your page. It's very clean. And, and like you said, the it's, it's all telling one story, which I love. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So now let's go down to a little bit of the description stuff. So if you notice, it says founder and host at Build Your Network. So it tells people exactly what I do. Founder and host Build Your Network. Then it has a little bit of personal information. I manage Travis Chapel, which is my my business page. So if you want to go look at my business page, you can click that link there. Married to Jacqueline Chapel, obviously pertinent piece of information that I want people to know about me. And then lives in Las Vegas, Nevada. So you, if you have not audited this section of your profile, I 100% recommend it because especially on mobile, if you're on mobile, which most Facebook users are on mobile, usually there's this laundry list of things right there. If you don't go edit that, then it's going to show everything that you have there. So it'll literally have like your 17 year work history. It'll have <laughs> like the last 28 cities that you've lived in, like, you know, grew up in Florida used to live in Dallas, used to live in Atlanta, now lives in Montana. And it's like, why is all this there? None of this is pertinent information to anything about me. Like the only reason that I have where I live in my profile now is that it's a notable place. I used to live in Lancaster, California. That's where I grew up. Like that is a podunk town in the middle of nowhere that absolutely nobody knows about. So (laughs) when I lived there, I didn't have that in my profile because it's irrelevant. Like there's not going to be a ton of people that go to my profile and be like, bro, you live in Lancaster? Me too. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like there's (laughs) not a lot of people like that. So now I have it as Las Vegas because people come in and out of Las Vegas all the time. Like everybody's in and out of Las Vegas. So when they go to my profile, and see that I live in Vegas, they're like, I get people reaching out to me all the time. Hey man, I'll be in Vegas next week. Would love to connect. Like I have that there because it's now a pertinent piece of information. So absolutely pieces of information there that matter. Don't have like, you know, graduated middle school at whatever, whatever middle school, graduated <laughs> high school in, you know, 1998 at whatever, whatever high school, then got to whatever, you know, I'm laughing because I've seen all of these. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like they're all over, man. And like uh, on desktop, it's not as big of a deal because it shows your whole timeline, but on mobile, like you gotta, you gotta do like three thumb scrolls to move past all the bull crap that doesn't even matter. Like, why is that even there? So only keep the stuff there. That's actually like that actually matters. And that tells people about you. Okay. Now moving down 
we have a featured photos section, which is a really cool thing that Facebook did recently, where you can actually select photos to feature on your timeline. Um, so if oh, you look cool. at the, the pictures okay. that I have on there, they're all telling this same story like we talked about. Yep. So there's one picture of- Cardone right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's one picture of my wife and I from our engagement session, just to let people know like that's my wife. There's a picture of my show on the top 200 of all of iTunes charts directly beneath the School of Greatness with Lewis House. Um, so to like build up social proof and credibility there, there's a picture of me and Jay Papazan. There's a picture of me and John Lee Dumas. There's a picture of me and Jack Canfield, uh, me and Pat Flynn and Jordan Harbinger, Molly Bloom, Grant Cardone, Kevin Harrington, like all this stuff is, are, are things that are featured right there in my featured photo section, just to build credibility in the fact that like, my, like I've put a ton of work into my show. So you should like take your time to listen to it. So if you if you have not ever edited this, by the way, Facebook's going to just pick random pictures probably. So make sure that you go in there and edit that. Pick pictures that that will bring credibility to who you are or to who your company is. Um, things that uh, that you don't want people having to go search through archives to find about you. Put them out there on the featured photos section. It's a really cool part. Moving down, there's another link there. So for this one, you can go to my, my link right there is bojanetwork.co slash iTunes. My new website just got launched this past week. So I'll actually need to go in there and update that to travischapel.com slash show um, because that's where I send people to to listen to my show now. But that is a link that brings people directly to where I want them to go. So sure, it could be a landing page, could be mm-hmm. whatever you, you decide Correct. to be. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So that that's like that's like really the biggest parts of the profile there. So right. Time you got the you got the the cover photo, the profile picture, your introduction, just description of like who you are and where you live and all that stuff, and then your featured photos section and the link right there. So like you should be going in immediately before you do anything else and optimizing that profile so that when people go to it, they actually want to do business with you. There's a desire for them to connect with you and you become more of an interesting person um, to connect with and you cut through the noise of the other 2 billion people that are on Facebook. Right. Absolutely. I'm looking at full disclosure. I'm looking at mine and all of those are blank. So (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've got some work to do. So I'm sure that lots of people will be in the same boat, but th- that's fantastic. So that's kind of, like you said, step one of the process. And then, you know, you talked about uh, groups being the primary driver of uh, traffic towards your Facebook page, um, mm-hmm. as you will. Am I thinking about that correctly? Yes. Yes, exactly. So once you optimize your profile, now you go join some groups and spend time in those groups, but you have to do it the right way. For some reason, when people network online, they treat it different than when they do in person. Like they might be a pretty good networker in person, meaning like they don't throw a business card in your face and barf up an elevator pitch and try to get you to buy from them immediately. They don't do those things in person, but then you go online and they do all of those things. It's like mind blowing to me. So people will go join 25 Facebook groups. They'll post their affiliate link or whatever, their website, their landing page, whatever, they'll go in there and post that. They get no traction on it whatsoever. And then they like claim that Facebook groups don't work. You need to put in the work in order to be able to get the result. So I recommend to only put a certain amount of Facebook groups in your rotation. Only the, like do as many as you can that you can actually go in and post engaging content in fairly frequently. So if this is your main revenue source, then you can join 30 groups. But if you are like everybody else and you have other things that you have to be doing, you can only spend 20, 30 minutes in these things every single day, then, you know, join five to 10 groups, Um, join groups that are 75, 80,000 people, join groups that are less than a thousand people, join groups in the, in the, in the mid range there, join groups that are like your niche specifically, join groups that are business in general, join groups that are B2B marketers, like join groups that have some area that coincides with where you know your ideal customer is probably hanging out, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yep. So join those groups and then immediately start adding value. Do not skip this step because if you skip this step, none of the other stuff is going to work. You must right. add value to the people without expecting anything in return. This is the whole idea behind networking in general and especially networking online is that you have to be adding value. So go in those groups. It might like this is a long term game. It might take two to three months for you to to like start seeing some conversions coming through and start realizing that the time that you're putting in those groups is actually worth it. But once you do the work, then you'll you'll really start understanding that like every one of these Facebook groups is like is like a, a cocktail mixer at a networking event. Like 
there's a few hundred or a few thousand people in one place that right. all have common interests that you can strike up conversations with, get to know, add value to, and potentially do business with in the future. Um, so spend time in those groups. And the best and most engaging posts that I, that I can come across are, are posts that ask questions, posts that draw a line in the sand and make people pick a side and then always include emojis. Emojis get better uh, engagement for some reason. I think it's just more attention grabbing if you have color in there. Interesting. Um, so there, there's a couple quick tips for for how to post better engaging content in those groups. So like, in a couple of these groups that, that, that I, I used to spend a ton of time in groups, now not as much anymore, but I used to spend a ton of time in groups and I, I would have... I would have posts in these groups that would get three, four, five hundred comments on them, um, a ton of likes and stuff like that. So then what I would do is I would go through and I'd look at the people who were commenting on my posts. I would comment back to all of them and I would look through and figure out which ones I really vibed with. And I'd go through and then I'd start adding them as friends. So they're posting on my content, the yep. content I post in the group, they found somewhat engaging, somewhat like cool, like they, something about it piqued their interest enough to make them either react to the post or comment or engage on the post in some way. So I go through, I add those people as a friend. Now what happens? They see a friend request, request come through and they tap on my profile, which is what? optimized for you them go. to like see my stuff. So now they've seen me in a group that has a topic that's similar to what they want to do and to what I want to do. Then they they saw a post that I did in that group that I put a lot of uh, you know value on the table or they engaged on. So they mm -hmm. obviously had some interest on what I said specifically. And then they're coming to my profile, which is now completely optimized to capture the attention of somebody like that person. So what do you think the odds are of them actually wanting to connect with me at that point? Pretty high. Absolutely. And yep. then what's really cool is that the next time you post in that group, Facebook is really good about notifying friends that are in the group that you posted. So mm. that's why I say this is a long process because you could be in a group and have zero friends in that group and then you you might get one or two likes or a comment or two. But if you keep posting regular content in those groups and you start getting 10, 12, 15, 25, 40 friends in that group, now when you post in there, Facebook tells those 40 people that, hey, Travis just posted something in whatever, B2B sales growth community, whatever. You're right? absolutely so, right though. So yeah, I get, get those notifications yeah. a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So now you get, they start getting notifications. They go on there that you start becoming a recognizable name. You're building up, all comes back to what we started off the conversation with. You're building up that know, like, and trust. More people are going to know you than they come to your profile. They see everything that you're about. Then they're going to like you. Maybe they hop on a phone call with you. You exchange a couple messages on Messenger and now they trust you. And now, they're way more likely to do business with you than they're going to be with the guy who just posted a link and asked for business. Absolutely. So yeah, you're really filling the top of your funnel pretty much with, with better qualified people who like you and are more engaged with you. And, and that you've seen good results from this. What's the sort of results that you've seen from, from doing activities like this? I think, uh, yeah, it's it's really dependent on the the content that you post and what your goals are. So right. for me, when I was doing it, my goal was not sales. My goal mm -hmm. was listeners to my podcast. My goal was audience reach and engagement. In those areas, it's helped tremendously. If you scroll down my Facebook timeline and stuff, you'll notice that I get really great engagement on like my on any posts that I have on my personal profile now. Um, when I started doing this, like a year and a half, two years ago, I had like eleven 1 hundred friends and probably 80% of them were not interested in what I was trying to do. So when I would post something about business, I would get like two likes and zero comments. Now scrolling through just like a couple of the more recent ones, here's one, 103 likes, 60 comments, um, 131 comments, 40 likes, a couple other ones, 41 likes, 119 comments, a couple shares, 112 likes, 55 comments, seven shares. Like that now there's tons of engagement. My audience growth has gone through the roof. Um, and I think a lot of it, I can point back to the fact that I spent a lot of time engaging with people in Facebook groups and making sure that when they came to my profile, they saw something that would actually capture their attention and not something that just gets lost in the noise like everybody else. I love that. So the old networking adage of, you know, you're the sum of the five people that, uh, 
that you are closest to in a way it's almost, you know, it's obviously not five people, but you're the sum of the, uh, the Facebook friends that you're connected with even as well, as far right. as using Facebook to drive traffic towards your site or, or towards any of your projects. Love this tactic. Um, I think this has been a great conversation and love your perspective on this. Anything else to kind of wrap up uh, this idea and, and how B2B marketers can be using this? Um, no, that's, that's really much it. I know I, I spit out a lot of information there. So, um, if you need to go back and listen and re-listen in a couple of times, whatever, do, do what you need to do. But yeah, I think, uh, I think just starting with that, optimizing your profile, getting that out of the way, and then deciding on the amount of groups that you can actually be engaging in and not let slip through the cracks after a week of posting in there. I think those are the first, you know, couple of steps to get you started in the right direction. Absolutely. I love it. So you mentioned before we were started recording um, about some resources that you have on your site. Maybe give a quick plug for what you guys got going on over at Build Your Network. Yeah. So I'm a huge proponent of masterminds. And one of the biggest questions I've been getting recently, because I, I talk a lot about them pretty openly, and I've, I've, I've personally invested tens of thousands of dollars into, into, these, uh, into these groups. And uh, so I, I get asked the question a lot, about like, hey, what like what is a mastermind? <laughs> you know, like right, what, what, right. what does that even do? Like, I don't even, like I don't understand. I hear people talk about them all the time, and I guess they're pretty cool, but I don't know how to find them. I don't know how much they are. I don't know if it's worth it for what I'm doing. Like, is that only something that podcasters do? Like, what like what what is it? How do they work? How much? All that kind of stuff. So, um, after a bunch of those types of questions, I just put together a free course that tells you everything you need to know about masterminds and just uh, six short lessons. So you can find that at freemmcourse.com. That's freemmcourse.com. Um, you can go over there and um, and get access to that. It's totally free. Walks you through everything you need to know about masterminds, just a few short lessons. That way you can really decide if it's something that's going to help you um, in your business in 2019 because everybody's different. Absolutely. Love it. And if any of our listeners want to connect with you further, uh, besides Facebook, uh, what, what's or is the Facebook the best spot to do that with? And, uh, and if not, uh, where would you like people to go? Yeah, Instagram. I'm spending a lot of time on Instagram recently. I, I spent a really good amount of time building up my Facebook profile, following all that kind of stuff. And now I'm kind of really focusing on Instagram. Um, I post still a lot on Facebook, but uh, Instagram DMs is probably the best way to connect with me. So I'm just at Travis Chapel over on Instagram. So shoot me a follow, shoot me a DM and uh, let's chat. I'm, I'm all about connecting with people. I just love having conversations with cool people. So um, if you are a cool person, you want to chat, um, hit me up over on Instagram at Travis. Chapel, C H A P P E L L. Awesome. Well, Travis, thanks so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it and good luck in 2019. Hey, really appreciate it, man. I had a great time chatting with you. Digital marketing agencies have a tough job. You have to stay on top of the latest marketing strategies for your clients and your agency. What if there was a way you could address both at the same time? Imagine your agency putting out content with greater quality and quantity. Envision bringing your clients a turnkey solution for one of B2B marketing's fastest growing media strategies, podcasting. You know all those clients asking for your help with their account-based marketing efforts? Picture being the first to bring them the idea of content-based networking, showing them the proven strategy for breaking into their most coveted accounts. Here's the concept. Sweetfish Media is looking to work with a limited number of innovative agencies interested in a new partnership model. We produce a podcast for your agency. You introduce the power of podcasting and Sweetfish services to your clients. Everybody wins. Learn more at sweetfishpartners.com.